okay hi guys and um, so uh, thank you to having me here after some time there's doing talks I will talk about my previous work and my post-mortem and what and since I changed in projects before and this is written in a really really bad English on purpose yeah because that's uh, it's a complex thing nobody understand properly yet there yeah. I will talking about an Linux based systems not only Linux because we're talking about only the kernel you see that's the problem is already big enough but we are not talking anymore about this only okay let's go next one so disclaimer notice there it looks like funny I would try to make looks funny it's not at all and then you see that at some point this is see that's who happens or not we don't know that so if you really really want to stop it and asking questions please do it during the talk okay the first obvious thing are we there yet that's a good question there so no yes and maybe so this is kind of industry moment I will try to minimize because I will not talk to uh, much of about technical arguments here because this is usually extensive and really boring there yeah, to be honest but uh, it's not only automotive industry that I come from but every single possible industry you can imagine that deal with safety data it's looking for this to use in Linux there and why everyone knows the obvious answer Linux taking care about mostly everything there but still it's hard why first of all kernel itself is a multi-purpose kernel the Linux kernel is not only a simple kernel that's dedicated for something even born in this way there on the origins it means that the kernel itself it's really 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 hard to think about how to make it safety qualified but then looking for these buzzwords yes I need to do that this is looking like marking in there so you can see synergy industry moment to 6262 because in ISO there there's containers everywhere this is ASIO for automotive you will hear everyone talking about this half of the time people don't know what they're talking about to be honest because it's basically it's everyone listen and try to sell something let's go to this very very old and since the beginning it's almost 20 years old it's still valid today so if you're looking about the first head thing is what everyone think about the Linux kernel part and even considering part of Android this is old but pay attention about that you are looking for just head people here we are not looking for the harder part let's forget about that and then you have starting to see green things like on the Android there's Libre Highlights or Bionic then you can see microlibc and glibc glib other things there every single thing need to be treated as safe qualified system there we're not talking about the kernel only and why is that and so people what you're not seeing these things we are not uh, running user space on device wrong so let's speak in a classic example for the head units that doesn't matter what you use and if for medical head units other things people say but it's just the part of graphics is not dealing there with safety information because it's on the firmware it's on the parts wrong now because now and more you can see systems interacting between the user interface and the user level and the safety systems simple example looking for a Tesla car that basically you can do everything there and then you know that's the connection between this part and there so you can see that's a lot of parts there and you can go there and this is old and didn't change it at all there so the kernel this Linux kernel was not designed for that why that's it's a multi-purpose kernel there of course so it's not dedicated for one single thing then people say wait you can compile the kernel for just this specific drive and other things no it's not that simple you cannot do that why because there's not a simple way to isolate a single task on the kernel people will say here oh you can do it. not it's not yet not that simple so you need test function per function literally this is 
this is a political and business game so every single thing that you do there you need to make again the test for every single function that you're doing there this is to, ma to make thousands and thousands of tests it's a large moving target and people say oh LTS long-term service is a kernel that basically you can guarantee that will be stable not sorry this is yes the kernel is stable but all the drivers all the hardware of, around it it's evolved together even in the, in the kernel being a long-term service it means that you always have a move target and then of course you don't have control of a single area because this drivers that is in the control of the companies is not the controls of the self proprietary drivers is the ones there so before I go to the mid stack any questions about the kernel is specific that people think about problems and safety nope okay so this is our headache compilers and generators that people love it need to be qualified as well your build stack you need to be qualified there. It's mean in the build stack, you mean since the moment you did make until you have the generated binary there. Your direct libraries need to be safety qualified there. And then mostly everything that touch the safe stack need to be qualified. And can you tell what detect and touch the safe stack? No, it's not easy to say. And this I have a very, very simple and nice example of this one. So let's go to the most basic ever thing for every single developer, the hello world. And it's a C hello world on Linux there. Oop. There we go. It's pretty much basic things. The program is here and a snippet of the output of the device. What you can see here. It's this simple hello world use a function from glibc and okay. So now your very small simple thing that's output and hello world on the screen using a huge libc that takes a lot of functions and everything there together it's linking. Then a question. So someone will refute this. Can you and someone refute this? Point and why it's happening there. This is okay. This hello world is using the entire glibc, so I should uh, safety qualify the entire glibc. If I run, okay. The question is yes or not. No. Why? Someone say no. Why? Okay. So. In the end, what happens there? When you have the binary, it's using only the initialization functions and don't use the rest of glibc, correct? Okay. Uh, I think you could, if you would stay with the same glibc, you might be able to just qualify a subset of it. But if you're planning or if you have an option to update the glibc, then you're I think pretty lost. Yes, so you say the subset. So let's go in further. Most of the people will say, wait, you're forgetting something. After you generate the binary and you strip your binary, what happens? You have just this small function of glibc together. There. Then you need to safety qualify this single function, right? This is correct or not? Yeah, this is correct and not at the same time because the next question answer who actually do the strip and generate this specific linking file who does this job it's your build stack it means your compiler so to guarantee that this is small function with this hello world is guarantee you need to have sure that your compiler produce the correct code so instead of simply using the entire glibc or just the function you need to safety qualify your entire compiler that, for some reason, is connected to a lot of libraries as well. It means that this small thing depends that you safety qualify your compiler. This depends that the other libraries that your safety compiler uses 
it's need to be safe to qualify it. That small function there need to be safe to qualify it. And then you can guarantee that your program it's safe to qualify it. And then, okay, you can argue this is a minimal. It's not handle uh, in like uh, problems in general because you you know and maybe some testers know that actually this will not cause problems but this is not hold itself and actually try to, to put your thing outside because you need legal basis on this so this is the next question that comes so is the whole thing about market uh, talking about containers Containers would be a solution. Let's isolate the process. Let's make everything isolated. Small things, so just safe qualify this parts, other things. But if you look at here, this is basically, you can understand this. <laughs> the thing that is contain your container sometimes is not safe. So you need to safety qualify the whole thing that is inside the container. And this is not helping the problem because then you have let's say an hypervisor, let's say the, a Linux that needs to be qualified to have a container that needs several functions inside to qualify, then the cost is enlarged a lot. It then, efforts, how actually just trying to do that? So first, and one is the industry everywhere from robotics, from medicine, from automotive, everyone is in the low pace to go in there. But the main efforts is this project, ELISA, the one that's made by Linux Foundation, is like they trying to find the exactly safety argumentation where the point that is going and you say, you pick your stack, you apply the safe argumentation, do the tests, and then you have your stack partially there. It's hard, it's really hard. And then there is this. And everyone understand this. Because this is the next thing that people say. Oh, okay, let's do a yak shaving. Let's pick in glibc, let's cut, 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 cut. Okay, okay, well, if you're cutting that much, okay, let's use in libc, like something like Alpine Linux. And then, oh, cut, 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 and then you go there, okay, a small function there. And then let's do the things. Okay, you need to put other function back. And then it goes recursively until it, at some point you say this. I cannot do this yak shaving like everyone do. So what's supposed to be the next step? This is exactly what has been done so far. So yak shaving is basically streaming line in the inter yeah, shaving. It's, you can understand about the example of hello world there. It's not working there. Recursive testing analysis. This is how the first step that companies are already achieving. And for example, Red Hat is one of them. It's long, 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 time enough testing, consecutive testing, thousands, hundreds of thousands of functions to prove that in this determinate amount of time, and this, this amount of testing time, it's never happening. So this argument can be considered there. But then, the moment that you change one single variable inside of anything on your stack, you need to redo this again. It's really cost intensive. So that's why you can see that's as long as you get some stack safety qualified for some processor, for some version or something, it's stuck on that. And every time you need to do an extra advance on these things, you simply do it ever again. And can you imagine the cost of these things? It's impossible there. There's a function test analysis kit. Analysis kit. This is exactly the one that everyone is looking for. It's basically one of the, the holy grail about the safety qualified part. It's mathematical. You can prove in a mathematical way that your function will never cause, or in the time of millions of times, it can cause one or single error or two. Yeah, this is like the ISO defined. It's the, the ELISA approach, try. It's hard, the one. And something else, that's just a combination of Linux stack with other kind of like Zephyr. On. But still, it never, run away of the safety qualification of the some part of the stack. It's, if you're looking around, even if you go to the most streamlined Linux distributions like Alpine, or use an LLVM that is the compiler is a little bit smaller than the whole GCC collection there, there's still a lot to safety qualify in there. That LLVM get a lot of traction in the latest years on this, 
market in general because this is easier to theoretically qualify for this. And then, here we go. We have some road ahead. It's some companies already achieved some qualification for some stack, but it's nothing about technical in general. We know what to do, we know what need to do, and but in business time, we need to understand that it's costly a lot. So the cost against the development and how you achieve this, we don't know when. Simply, we don't know when. So this, we are looking for the next mountain because it's basically, it's how it happens there. We will go there, we don't know. It's like, it's in this industry, you never say impossible. So that's, it's just hard there. And so that's why you still not see Linux running as in a general system in some things like airplanes yet, or still not controlling the main, the main uh, central units or some cars. So that's it. I think that's basically explained that how difficult. It's a really boring but necessary thing that happens for the future. Because if you know, we're talking about AIs and you're talking about robots. And if you want to have this, we need to have this safety qualifier in the future. So thank you and questions. <laughs> Hi, uh, I just want to give you another point of view on the on the safety. Something you didn't say is that a safety cisnet is is not only safety or not safety. There are levels in the in in, in the norms. You 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 say the twenty six and twenty six two. For on my side, I work on the railway signaling, and I apply safety as a day, day job. But we use Linux, but not on the most safety part because of, for example, its communication capabilities. The, the, the IP stack is just marvelous. And that's true on the most safety part of the systems. We don't use Linux as it cannot be qualified, uh, trying to qualify GCC or something like that. It's a uh, very huge amount of, uh, amount of work, but we can't just say, we can't use Linux on safety systems, but we can choose it on very specific pieces of the systems. Yes. That's correct. The, the, the same thing that you can see BMW, the IX, is, my previous project, this was there. So it's running the Linux. This is, is, uh, I was talking about that on the when the life was not over before in the Linux Summit. That's uh, talking about how you're doing this. Yeah. But yes, you're correct. But still, at the moment that you're starting to touch the safety critical part, we're talking about qualification. And then it's, it's a lawyer's business and political business and economic business. It's more complex. Though. And it will be ever more difficult because the norms, the standards and so on are more and more harsh. And uh, when, when you, s you talk about uh, formal proof on, uh, on something like Linux, it's, uh, it's a nightmare. Yeah, it's, it's more than this, if you think you're really about. So let's say. Before, in the past, you just go on your plug, on your wall, just turn on, and then the light comes, and the light's off. Mm -hmm. And now you have, for example, um, things like automated lights that can be controlled by the internet, and then you can start to work that how this, an electrical device that connected to the electric, electric part of your house, it can be controlled by the internet and can be harmful or not. Yes, so you can allegate that it's just a light, it's turned on and off. And how you can guarantee that you cannot force the system to make the light turn on and off so much times that it's got hot enough to just create a fire. People don't think about that, but this is becoming more critical and critical. Someone here? Hello. I have a question about. Um, I, I read in the, some articles that SpaceX used Linux to control the Falcon 9 with three, three systems and a redundancy, redundancy uh, procedure. Do you, and it seems to work with x86 uh, standard PC. 
Yeah, but embedded then, PC, do you have any comments and any information about it? Or? Yeah, redundancy, it, uh, it solved the problem. For example, let's imagine that you are in the plane. That's the most common thing. So let's get the example for the, the Boeing 777 that has, for fun, they put in seven times the same code running for redundancy. But this solved the problem if the system fails, the other assume. But uh, still, you cannot guarantee if the function is right or not. So if your code is not safe, if you do a redundancy, you have several times the same code that's not safe. So it's guaranteed that your system be down or up, but not guaranteed that actually your code is safe or not. It's simply, and you, you can make the most perfect code if you not uh, go to authorities and basically say to, uh, prove to them that it's really safe, it's not uh, hold up. Now SpaceX is the main provider for the, provider for the NASA, so I think the, the agency accept uh, uh, such, uh, such a, an architecture, so yes. maybe the things will be will change in the future. Or yeah, but uh, so you can think that uh, they're using a lot of dedicated systems, not only Linux. Yes, yeah, so, so yeah. So this dedicated system is another history. It's easy to safe to qualify when you made this Linux. But if you're talking about multiple poses, Linux is difficult. Hi. So. Automotive has multi-layer watchdogs, and i.e. the containers kicking the watchdog, the kernels kicking the watchdog, user space kicking the watchdog, the thing that's presenting to the screens kicking the watchdog. How much does the watchdog save us in that we don't need to have stuff that's safety critical if it's like a, playing a video for a head-up display? Well, this is you, uh, it's hard to say. You know, that's a Putting watchdogs can guarantee that you understand to where the, the single point of failure happens there, or it's, it's like really for you looking for it to six to six to the whole ISO, you can see that you have one or two failures in millions of operations there for to be safe qualified. It's you can assume that it can happen if you do the tests several times. It never happens that the watchdog never tells you then anything there. But then, in the end, something happens that in the middle of operation that the watchdog is not looking, that happens. So a watchdog can tell you a lot of things, even controlling how the steps are there, like the trace part of everything, but it cannot tell to you that it will fail or not. So I, I agree with you from like an engine management type PC, but if it's like audiovisual headset type thing where it's less critical, less safety critical, can you not just say we don't care, it can reboot in 200 milliseconds? Yes, as long as they are not connected to the safety to right. the safe pipeline. That's just a simple thing. A moment that you have some code passing to the safe pipeline is like it means that it can affect everything. Okay. It's not. It's, not, it's like that. that. That would include things like the reversing camera and stuff. That that is safety critical, right? Yeah. 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 Cool. It's you always can have. Let's let's go to the simple example of the GLIPC. It's the most critical code inside the glibc is the whole thing about manipulation of strings characters because internationalization it's an evil thing because uh, the I, I 18 and so if you think about that someone is using glibc and then it passing for this code and try to make it uh, an invalid like pushing in some invalid characters into the utf character that uh, corrupt the string line of the text that uh, reach the, the safety part, imagine the situation. So it's a simple thing, but yeah, it's fine. So um, from what I understand with uh, safety critical systems and so on, um, Linux isn't really a solution uh, to, to deploy there. So my idea would be just to try to avoid it as much, much, much as possible and just split up the system into maybe uh, have microcontrollers there that handle safety critical systems where you can have a different uh, compiler that you can uh, yeah, analyze and so on. Or there are projects like a Jailhouse where you have uh, um, a scheduler that just isolates CPUs for safety critical stuff and then you can um, you know, analyze this, this scheduler. And on the other course you can maybe uh, boot up Linux and have some kind of yeah, uh, easy communication there where you have analyzed this that it doesn't interfere with each other. Is that not li like mm, uh, a 
proper best solution? Yeah, this is in the, the logical approach. This is uh, I, I know that most of people think about this one. So let's say that you you really think that about putting something like Sapphire in a very small device that is very controlled. Is con you know exactly what is running there. And all, let's go in even for the past. Remember the Symbian. Symbian is basically a very, very controlled thing on the small device there, telephone there. You need to even handle the ham by yourself. But then at the point that you're doing this communication between, you need to actually prove that the communication between not affects anyone, even sending commands. So let's make a simple comparison there. One thing is you having some display reading commands of there. You are not touching anything, communicating, but you're just having it only. The second thing is that you have your, your, let's say, a panel for the medical device that you put some controls on the touch screen that goes mess a message that goes to there that you assume that is safe there. Yeah? Can you guarantee that your screen you're doing this exactly the same message in the time and right and everything? Or your panel is sending the right message there? Even if you know that your site separated, isolated, and you know the function works correctly, so this is it's, it's the same thing. How much times you can do wrong inputs there, hmm. and then your your other side is completely destroying your safety qualification because it's simply it's think that's not able a, uh, safe to handle these things. I, I heard, for instance, stuff where they uh, wanted to have a secure overlay. Uh, on the screen, controlled by a microcontroller, so they have safe, safe, they have the, the sort of layer stuff. They have uh, multimedia on the background with, with Linux, and on the top they layer safety critical systems, and then uh, they sort of. <laughs> that's, 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 a, that's an interesting thing. So, uh, and there's, there's several things. So, the, in the automotive industry, for example, there's the regulations on the on the fact that when you have some crash and accident, you need to be stamped at the, the speed what happens in the moment, the moment of the crash. And you uh, do the question right now, what happens because all the panels are digital there. So there's plenty of solutions on this one, but you need to have a way that in the moment of the crash, that one that you're displaying on the screen need to be stamped there. It means that at this moment that you put a completely not analog uh, digital panel, you mean that you need to have a safety information to be stored by authorities there at the moment of the crash. It means you're talking display graphics to be stored in a crash accident on the system completely will be is way worse than a current crash. So this, you can go in this way. It's there and there. Uh, just another feedback on the same kind of topic. I was working for um, co-designing an aircraft system uh, it was an in-flight entertainment system, so just the screen you have in front of you when you're flying. And all the uh, user-facing part was Linux, but everything in contact with the, the aircraft was tied to the regulation. And the regulation put us to put a, a barrier that everything under regulation is under a microcontroller, and everything should be perfectly standalone, and never only consuming something from our system, but never interact with it. And this is the way we solved it, because uh, getting Linux on the certification was just a no-go. It was totally impossible to, to achieve. So we put the line this way and it worked. Yeah. And it still flies. Yeah. Yeah. Yep. Last one. Okay. So. Uh, so I, I still have the question. Because if, you, if you take the medical device, for example, where you have the display and the processing thing, if they communicate via some channel and messages, it's still a lot easier to just certify uh, the message parsing in the no. Yes. The, of then, course. then to certify the whole Linux kernel and graphics stack, right? So it's a step in the right direction? Question mark. Yes, but then uh, who sends the message? Can you guarantee that who sends the message is, is safe? Uh, but but if if the receiving part is certified to to like handle all specified, uh, I'll make it short, if it's certified to be robust. So it doesn't matter, right? Yes, this is, this is one step, but then as you know, you cannot guarantee what happens on the other side. 
So I'll, I'll just add to it. Uh, the touchscreen controllers usually run firmware. They are microcontroller on their own. It's like 64 kilobytes of code, which is blob. Um, so can you certify that? <laughs> no, you don't have to because it, if, you, if you, I wonder if the message parsing is correct. So you're we, uh, robust against any kind of We input. don't have to, doesn't work with the authorities. Pardon? We don't have to, doesn't work with authorities. Sorry, you need to certify it and you need to go after the supplier to certify it on everyone. Unfortunately, this is how it works. But no. Yeah, uh, sorry. Maybe, maybe <laughs> I didn't make myself quite clear. If you certify that you can handle any kind of input. Yeah, we try to find the easy way out. This is, this is not existent this term. Sorry, this way. Yeah. Okay, thank you.